how to make the My Pocket Pediatrician face mask. Hi guys, I'm Dr. Lily here with My Pocket Pediatrician. I'm a board certified pediatrician. I am not a personal protective equipment expert, but I'm here today to talk to you guys about homemade masks. As you know, we're in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic and our healthcare workers are dying every day because they don't have enough personal protective equipment. So out of the goodness of their hearts, so many people have started making homemade personal protective equipment for the healthcare workers. Some people have 3D printers, they're printing face shields, they're trying to print masks. Some people are sewing, there's a million masks challenge, there's all kinds of stuff happening. But as wonderful as that is, personal protective equipment is not something we can just make at home very easily without knowing exactly what we're doing. People have PhDs in personal protective equipment. I've talked to some of these PhDs. They've spent years and years training on performance and fit and functionality. And it's hard for us who have no knowledge of any of that to all of a sudden start mass producing stuff that we're hoping is going to be effective and safe for people to use. There are a couple of things that are really important for you to understand. One is, I know for sure somebody's going to come along and say, fast forward to this timestamp when she starts actually talking about what's important. I know that's going to happen. I know you guys don't like the blah, 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 boring stuff. But the truth is, if you're trying to make gear from home for healthcare workers that you want to actually be effective, you really need to understand what you're doing. And that's why it's so important that you actually listen to that stuff. Now, I know it's going to happen. So I'm actually going to go ahead and put in those timestamps for you too. I'll put them in the description. I'll also give you a printable guide that has all the timestamps in it of each step of the mask so that when you're working with this you can go back to each step and look at it so that this can be as easy as possible I know this video is ridiculously long it's taking me forever to edit it because I have hours of material that I'm trying very hard to condense down for you into something that's easy to understand but also has all the essential information in it believe me when I'm looking at stuff I want to know exactly what I'm doing and if it's worth my time to watch it so really quick here's a time warp of what we're gonna be doing and then I'm gonna explain to you a little bit more Now that you watch that, I can pretty much guarantee what you're thinking is, whoa, that looks like way too much work. I don't think I want to do that. I'm going to go watch one of those five minute craft ones and figure out how to make as many masks as possible in as little time. I totally get that. But if you actually want to make masks for healthcare workers, you need a mask that actually is going to filter with a tight seal and that can pass a fit test. The good news is these masks pass a fit test. And the other thing that's different about mine is I'm working with Filty, which is a filter media that was actually designed to filter viral particles, similar to a real N95. So when I made my first tutorial, I was working with 3M HVAC material and that also passed my fit test. So I was really excited about that. But I think this design is better. It is gonna be more comfortable and it's actually gonna function more similarly to an N95. So if you can power through and make it to the end, I actually have a discount code for my viewers for watching my video, and that's with Filthy. So if you order from them, you will get 10% off. So if you can make it through this video, you're gonna get a 10% off discount code with them. Now, the other thing I'm asking you to be patient with me in this video is that I don't live alone. I am social distancing right now with my family of seven and a dog. I have four kids who are seven and under, so I'm doing my best to edit out the five million interruptions that happened in the making of this video, but that does mean there's gonna be little jumps here and there. And I ask you to just be patient with me on that because there's really not much I can do. And apologies for any dogs or children who may make appearances. The other thing I know is gonna happen is I'm gonna have people telling me they wanna wear this mask because they have COPD or asthma or some other risk factor and they want to be able to go to the store wearing this mask. This mask is not designed to replace physical distancing. You are still supposed to stay home. These masks are for people who have no other choice but to be out and around other people. If you're not used to wearing a real N95, you're gonna find this mask very uncomfortable. It's a little hot, it's a little sweaty. And the thing that worries me about regular people wearing these masks is that the filters can 
can get kind of clogged up after a while. And once these filters get full of dust and other particulate matter, it gets kind of hard to breathe through them. Now, I'm gonna tell you something I did as part of an experiment with my first mask. I was working on getting rid of the moisture, so I took a Ziploc bag, cut it the same size as my filter, and I put it in my mask. I didn't realize what a great seal I actually had in this mask, so when I put that Ziploc bag in there, I quickly became hypoxic, meaning my oxygen levels dropped and I came pretty close to fainting. And these masks don't just fall off because there's a seal on your face and the elastic goes all the way around. You could actually increase your carbon dioxide levels, start rebreathing them, and if you don't take that mask off very quickly, it could be dangerous. So I definitely don't think anybody should be wearing these masks alone. People have asked me about putting them on children. I don't think that's a great idea. If you have any respiratory risk factors, I fully recommend discussing it with your physician and making that decision about whether wearing a filtering mask like this would be a good idea for you or not. So my intent in designing these was for healthcare workers who are in a working environment. I don't think anybody should wear these masks without supervision or contact with other people. Don't wear them around the house. And I'd probably recommend talking to your own physician about whether or not it's a good idea for you to wear this. My intent with this is for healthcare workers who have no other access to PPE and who are wearing them at work around other people. So right now there are a lot of problems in the world, but the ones I'm trying to address are one, there's not enough commercially made personal protective equipment. Two, that's leading to healthcare workers dying. Three, homemade PPE is time consuming and can be costly and ineffective. Four, supplies are hard to get. And five, there are definite elastic shortages right now. So I've spent the last few weeks researching. And when I say researching, I mean, I'm studying, but I'm still in absolutely no way an expert in this, but trying to figure out how we can improve these designs so that they become helpful. So some of you have watched some of my earlier videos. This is going to be kind of the culmination of all of them. So some of you might have seen some of this before, but I just really have to include it because it's completely vital to understand what we're doing and how it's going to work. So in the healthcare world, there are two types of masks that we generally use. This one is called a surgical mask. It's basically a piece of paper with some foam kind of stuff on it and two ear loops, and we wear them when we are seeing patients. Sometimes we always wear them in the OR uh, or any kind of sterile procedure, and that's because this mask catches my droplets and it protects you from me. So my friend had a post saying, my mask protects you, your mask protects me. This is that type of mask. It will catch droplets, I do wear it at work during flu season because when I'm swabbing children and looking in their throats and they're coughing or licking me or doing whatever they're gonna do, their droplets do get on me. And this does stop their droplets from going directly into my mouth or nose. If there's something that's airborne though, this mask will not work. See how there's gaps everywhere and air can go in any of these areas basically. Oh, and this mask does have a little wire in it so it does fit to your nose and make it a little more comfortable, but that does not provide a seal. This mask is made by 3M and this is a real N95. These are very hard to come by. I'm sure you've heard about them now. N95 means that this mask filters particles down to three microns. So for those of us who work in hospitals or in the healthcare field, we have to get fitted for these masks every single year. Air wants to go through the mask, but if there's any gap anywhere in it doesn't, and it has a way that it can leak through to our faces, it's not gonna work. The air is gonna find the path of least resistance and go there. So when I put this mask on, it fits very tightly to my face, okay? There's no gaps in here. I can breathe through it, but after wearing these for a while, sometimes an hour or two at work, you can get a little sweaty, you can be a little bit short of breath. They're not that comfortable, they're hot, uh, and you're kind of rebreathing your own air a lot through them. These masks are what we use for airborne particles. Like for example, if we're taking care of a patient with tuberculosis, this would be the mask I would be wearing. So for the coronavirus or the COVID-19 pandemic, the N95s are what's recommended for people who are gonna be in close contact with those patients. Now, these are in massive shortage. The reason for that is there's only a certain type of machine that can make this material. These machines are very expensive. They are running around the clock. You can't just make more of those machines very easily. This material is hard to make. It's got electrostatic charges and all kinds of stuff in it. It's not just a filter. You can't replace it with a coffee filter or some quilting material or something like that. This is actually a very complex material. So we've been doing our best trying to come up with a replacement for that. This is a mask that's from a hardware store, which is another sort of respirator mask, but it doesn't actually filter viral particles. You can tell the difference between this and this. This one's thick, it's got a seal. This one goes over my mouth and it's gonna protect me somewhat from dust, but it's not gonna do a whole lot for seal because it's only got one little string on it. You can see 
there's plenty of places for air to get in. It's all right for the general population, but this is not gonna protect me from viral particles either. Now with these massive shortages of personal protective equipment, the CDC unfortunately released a statement a couple of weeks ago saying if healthcare workers don't have access to personal protective equipment, they could tie a scarf or a bandana around their face. This is a terrible idea. If I have a bandana on my face and somebody is coughing COVID or whatever kind of droplets at me, this bandana is going to act like a sponge basically. So where this would sort of at least it has like a little bit of a plasticky sheen on it to sort of stop those droplets from coming at me, this is just going to soak them in like a sponge and then this bandana is flopping in and out of my mouth and putting those droplets in a higher concentration directly into my face. It's not a good idea. There have been some studies that show that wearing just simple fabric like that is actually a pretty bad idea. It's okay if you're out in the community because you're keeping your droplets to yourself. And that's why the new recommendations for everybody in the public to wear masks has come out because if you contain your own droplets and you're not breathing your droplets all over the produce and doorknobs and everything else that you're coming into contact with, then that's gonna slow the spread of this disease drastically. But if I'm a healthcare provider and I'm seeing patients and they're in my face and they're coughing in my face, this is gonna do very little for me. So a lot of people are making masks like this that look very much like our surgical mask. They're just simple fabric. They have ear loops, maybe a nose piece. They go on. And again, this is kind of a mask shaped bandana. Again, it's not, there's no seal, there's no filtration. And basically it's keeping my droplets to myself, but it's fabric. And so it could be concentrating those droplets again onto my face. So as a healthcare worker, this is not a good option for me. There's leaks everywhere. So then people said, well, why don't we put filters into our masks? And so they started coming up with some filter pocket masks and things like that. This one took me five minutes to make. It's just a couple of hair ties and a pocket mask. And it's got a pocket inside where you could place some sort of filter material. And so this style has been really popular for people to make. The problem is when you wear something like this, there's no seal. Anything going around my ears cannot make a good seal on my face. So what's gonna happen is air is coming at me with or without your droplets in it. And as it approaches my face, it's gonna come here and I'm breathing in. So the force of my lungs breathing in is gonna suck air in. And air is looking for the path of least resistance. So instead of going through the filter material, which might be a nice idea, it's gonna come in here, it's gonna go under here, it's gonna find these gaps up here. It's popping off my ears because it doesn't fit that well. All this filter is doing, if it doesn't have a seal, is detracting the air and sending it around and directly into my mouth. So again, this style of mask is really not a good option. So I have been working and researching and staying up all night, and my husband thinks he's gonna wake up one day and I'm gonna have shrunk our kids or something by accident, but I've been trying really hard to figure out how to make a mask with a good seal that will filter to address the shortage of N95 masks. So my solution is a homemade mask that has a tight seal. It's been fit tested. There's a replaceable filter. It can be adjustable to different sizes and it's washable and affordable. Now, if you have real commercially available PPE available, take it over this every single time. This is not medical advice. I am not talking to you as a doctor. I'm talking to you as a very tired mom who knows how to sew and has been up late for weeks trying to come up with a better alternative. So if you wanna make this mask, you're going to do it at your own risk. You're going to wear it at your own risk, but it's an idea of something that might be better. So the first mask that I made was a pocket mask and it basically has elastic on all four sides and a pocket for the filtration material inside. But instead of going around the ears, the elastic loops around my head. There's a nose piece with foam and wire inside. So this way, when I'm wearing this mask, the air has no choice but to travel through the filter. There's no other way for it to get in any way around. When I was making this mask, I was having a really hard time coming up with a filter that could filter viral media. And what I came up with as a filter source was the 3M HVAC air filters. And I made a tutorial on how to convert a 3M 
high level, so 1500 or 2200 or higher HVAC filter into a filtering mask. Since I've made that tutorial, 3M has come out and said they don't recommend this. Um, now this is not made out of fiberglass. You can look at the MSDS sheet on these, but this is not what its purpose was. Its purpose was to be used for HVAC. So they will not say this is a good idea or that it's safe. Now I did take this and I fit tested it and I was able to get it to work under certain circumstances. If you've already been making these masks, they work. So one of my dear friends called me who she was one of my bridesmaids and she's an infectious disease doctor in California and I live on the East Coast and she said, hey, I can't get any N95s and she's a small size. She said, do you think you could make me something smaller? And I said, yes, I wish you were here so I could stick it on your face and squeeze and measure. And, you know, obviously that's not possible. So I was trying to figure out how to make a mask that would be a little bit more adjustable so that people who have different sizes could fit it, especially if you're making for somebody who is not right in front of you. So I worked around and played with it and few different ways and I came up with this design of the mask which is basically the same idea as this one except instead of this one which is basically a six by nine square being stretched into elastic this one has a little more shaping there's some contouring on the nose there's less material around the the chin and it's more like a circle mask so I also have contrasting colors for the front and the back so it's easier to know which side goes towards your face and you can see here it's a little more similar to this size being a circle. The other thing that's nice about this one is that there are toggles on it. So when I put it on, I can adjust it to the point where it feels comfortable and tight across my face. So for those of us who wear N95 masks, we have to do what's called getting fit tested every year. Now what that means is we put on the mask and they put us in a little plastic hooded tent with a hole in it and somebody squirts one of four different solutions into the hole and we have to jump up and down and read a poem and bend over and touch our toes and march up and down and do all these different things for about seven minutes and move our face in all different directions. And the stuff that they spray in there is pretty noxious. Some of it is saccharin, which is just a sweet smell. Some of it's kind of this bitter, awful stuff. One of them gives me migraines. You have to go get fitted every single year because all of us have different sized faces and our faces can change. You might get pregnant, you might grow a beard, you might have different things happen. So that's why we have to retest every year to make sure that we know if we're wearing a standard N95, it's gonna help us. What I wanted to know was if I could make a mask that with a proper filter inside could pass that fit test. And I'm really happy to say that I went and fit tested yesterday and five of my seven masks passed the fit test. Now this was only on me. Uh, I didn't have anybody else available who was ready and willing to wear the mask and do the fit test themselves. So I absolutely 100% recommend fit testing before you wear this mask. Because if you don't have a good seal with it, it's gonna be just the same as if you're wearing this ear loop pocket mask. The air is gonna find the path of least resistance and go around it. So if you are working in healthcare and you don't have access to the proper personal protective equipment, please get fit tested when you wear this with a filter inside to make sure that you know that you're actually being protected. The other thing that's an absolute must is that if you're wearing a fabric mask, you must wear a face shield with them. So face shields come in different shapes and sizes. This is one that I made out of a shower curtain and a headband. The point of it is, is that it's gonna block droplets from getting to your face. Now, those of us in healthcare are usually wearing eyewear of some sort too, goggles probably, but if I have this fabric mask in here, I don't want your droplets getting on here and soaking into my mask. So if I'm wearing this and I'm in close contact with you, I should absolutely have a face shield on as well. The real N95 I would also wear a face shield with. This at least has some polymer on it to kind of block some of those droplets. This is cotton, so again, it's gonna kind of soak it in like a sponge. So you want every possible barrier between you and the patient that you can have. One of the biggest problems that everybody in all of the sewing groups is having is that there are shortages of elastic. Everybody's asking, where can you find it? How can you do it? So one nice thing about this mask is it costs around $2 to make this mask and all your work is into the mask itself. If you're making a mask where you're sewing or melting or doing something to your filter material to make it like this, you're gonna have to throw away your elastic every day as well, and there's a shortage of that right now. So one of the benefits here is that we have reusable elastic. This mask is washable. You can wash and dry after your shift, throw out your filter material, and then put a new filter in the next day, and you still have all your structure the same, and you have your elastic that you can reuse. So that's another benefit when we are in such low supply of resources right now. Now these masks do take me about 40 minutes or so to make it. It might be a little faster if you're mass producing them, but by the time you've washed and dried your material and cut it and then sewn it appropriately, it does take a lot of time. Several people have said, I don't like your design on this one because they thought it was a little too hard. And it, it is a little hard. It's not for a brand new novice sewer. 
you're stretching elastic onto material while you're sewing, you have to kind of have good coordination to do that. But if you've got this reusable washable pocket mask where all your labor is in the, the fabric of the mask and all your materials are in there, it might just be worth it to put the time in to make a quality mask like this. Again, if you're doing this, you're sewing this at your own risk, you're working with the materials at your own risk, uh, you can't sue me if you burn yourself on your iron or anything else like that. And uh, if you're wearing it, you're wearing it at your own risk. Now, if somebody puts in the time and your Aunt May makes you a mask and you suddenly wind up with a shipment of real N95s, wear the real N95s. You can take a picture of yourself wearing your mask to, so that she knows that you love her. But if you have real gear available, always wear your real gear. Okay, this is just a last ditch effort at a time when I wake up every day to the news that another physician or another nurse has died. And my hope is, is that this is better than the bandana idea or some of the filter pocket masks where there's no seal or just some of the simple cotton masks that mimic kind of the surgical masks. My hope is this is a better idea. I can't guarantee it. Again, everybody's face is a different shape. Everybody's going to be wearing these differently. So I don't know how they're going to perform long term over shifts and things like that. But I'm really happy that I did pass a FET test with it and I want to teach you how to make it. These are the supplies that you're going to need in order to make this mask and I'm going to break it down and go over each one individually. So let's talk about supplies. I know this looks a little overwhelming to have all this stuff all over the place and it overwhelms me too. This stuff has been all over my house for weeks and I'm kind of losing my mind seeing it everywhere. But I want to give you guys some options since we can't go out to the store. A lot of us have stay at home orders. So I want you to see what you can work with and how you can make it work. Uh, and I want to give you some of the options that I figured out. First, you're going to need 100% cotton fabric, preferably in two colors if possible. I say 100% cotton material because it's sturdy. It will hold up well. I recommend 100% cotton. You want to wash it and shrink it and iron it. Uh, I do recommend having two different colors if possible so that you have a an easy to recognize front and back side for your mask. It can work with only one color if you need to, but it's probably a little bit better if you can mix two together. When you're looking at fabric, this is regular 100% cotton, kind of like quilters fabric. I got this at Walmart for about $3 a yard. I know Joanne sometimes is closed. Some of them are giving away some of the fabric samples to make masks, so you may be able to get something like that. Definitely want 100% cotton because we're not 100% sure how these are going to be washed and sterilized. Uh, a lot of people might be washing them at home, but some people might be using different chemical solutions or things at work or autoclave. You cannot autoclave the mask because of the elastic in it. They may be using some cleaning solutions or something where you wouldn't want any polymers in the fabric to react with it. There is a way if you have fabric at home, you can do something called the burn test. You can look that up online to determine if what you have is 100% cotton or not. You also are looking for something with a slightly tighter weave if possible. It's better to have something kind of a thicker, more high quality quilters type fabric than something very thin, see-through, sheer, that kind of thing. You're going to need elastic somewhere between a quarter and a half inch wide. Uh, you need about a yard of elastic per mask, a little bit more, so that comes out to about 75 cents per mask. It's very hard to find, but it's just about impossible to make this mask without elastic. The reason for that is because elastic is what makes it possible for this mask to get that tight seal on the face. Okay, now let's talk elastic because that's what we really have a shortage of. I used to go to Walmart and buy these four yard rolls bigger than this, but they are all sold out. So I've been buying some of these packaged ones, but there's a big difference. So if you can try to get braided elastic, this is three eighths of an inch braided elastic. It's very strong. It's very stretchy. When I stretch it, it looks basically the same, just a little bit narrower than when it's not stretched. Now, because there were shortages, I also bought some of this knit elastic. It comes with a little green one. Now, the knit elastic looks kind of the same, but when you, when you stretch it, you can actually see through it. So when you stretch this one, it's still pretty strong, but it's definitely not as strong as the braided elastic. Now, a lot of people can't get anything, so I started looking around trying to see what else I could do. I've ordered about 400 yards off of eBay, it was supposed to be delivered March 24th. It hasn't arrived yet. This is April 9th, so I'm still waiting on it. So when I was in the dollar store getting stuff for my uh, face shield tutorial, I came across these headbands and I thought, well, these are elastic. I wonder if they would work. So I bought them. The black ones come six for a dollar. Uh, it's about the same thickness, so I'd say about three eighths of an inch. It is much stronger than the white one. It's harder to stretch it. Now, what that means is for my design with a toggle in it, you wouldn't be able to use a loop like this with the toggle. You'd probably have to find a way to cut it and then sew it longer because this is not as long and it's so tightly stretched. I did use this to make a mask, 
Uh, it is painful, but it actually did pass the fit test. So I wore this one for maybe 20 minutes or so and I started to feel kind of like a pulsing in my face and on the sides of my head. It's not comfortable. I guess if I was gonna remake it, I would make it with a little more elastic in it, but it did pass. So if you can't find anything else, this might be a feasible option. I would suggest playing around with it to get your measurements right. Now these I also bought, same deal at the dollar store, six for a dollar. They have this kind of rubbery stuff in them. Wasn't sure how that was gonna hold up. It's definitely a lot weaker of an elastic than for sure than these and it's even a lot weaker than these are. I did make a mask using them and I was hoping that with my toggles I would be able to tighten them down enough. I pulled and tightened and pulled and tightened and I could not get this one to pass the fit test. So I don't think I would recommend getting this type of headband. Also the other problem was the rubber in them really ripped out my hair. Painful. I don't know how people wear these in their hair. So the other thing some people are doing because of this elastic shortage is they are taking ace bandages and they're cutting them into strips. So you get a strip like this that's similar to elastic. So this elastic is stretchy definitely. It is not as strong as the braided elastic. This would be kind of more like the knit elastic. But my biggest concern with doing this is I don't know how well these are gonna hold up in the wash. I think this would be fine for a one-time use thing, but you can see it's pretty fuzzy. Cut. I think with it being cut, it's gonna unravel a little bit. But if you can't find anything else, I guess it's an okay option. It just may not last as long. So when you're looking for elastic, I would definitely try to get the braided kind. You can get anywhere between a quarter of an inch and a half of an inch, and I would definitely recommend braided over knit, knit over headbands, and if you're getting headbands, I would only get the black ones. The colored ones with the little rubbery stuff in them didn't work at all. Okay, I've gotten interrupted about 17 times in the last 30 minutes when I've been trying to make this video, but the best interruption just happened, and I just got a huge roll of 200 yards of elastic. So I'm so excited it finally arrived and I don't have to mess around with these headbands anymore. You need three quarter inch ribbon, about seven inches per mask, or you can use bias tape or anything else that is three quarters of an inch wide. So let's talk about our nose pieces. For our nose pieces, you need a piece of ribbon that's about three quarters of an inch wide and you want a ribbon that's pretty strong, nothing that's sheer or anything like that. The point of this ribbon is just to hold our nose piece in place. Rubber foam is absolutely essential for the seal on the mask, and you need something that's about 3 eighths of an inch wide. You need 6 inches per mask. This is rubber foam weather stripping. It is 3 eighths of an inch wide and 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Now floral wire is going to be important for the nose piece. I was able to get this floral wire at Walmart. It is 20 gauge wire. This whole bag was about 98 cents and each one is 18 inches long. So I will be cutting it into six inch strips. Now, some people are using stuff that's more like twist ties. This I got at the dollar store, so this whole thing was a dollar. So this is, again, very cheap. These are multiple pieces of wire. You're gonna need one for each mask. Some people suggested using pipe cleaners, but what I'm seeing in the sewing communities that I'm on is that when you wash the pipe cleaners, they tend to rust and you get kind of a red ring through the mask. So you may not want to actually use pipe cleaners. The floral wire has been holding up well for me, but you do have to bend the ends. You're gonna need two types of scissors, one for cutting your fabric, one more industrial pair that you could use for cutting paper and your other materials like the wire possibly, or you need a pair of wire cutters. You also need a pair of needle nose pliers, a marker and a tape measure. So for working with your wire, you either need some wire cutters or some kind of industrial strength scissors so that you can cut your wire easily. I also recommend a pair of needle nose pliers so that you can bend your edges down and you probably should wear eye protection when you're doing that. You definitely need a tape measure for this project. Life would probably be a little easier if you have a printer and some paper, but if you don't have access to a printer, you can kind of look at this design. It's really simple and you could probably just take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and draw it yourself, uh, getting an idea of what these two sizes are. And then a slightly smaller one for your filter. You also need toggle clips for this mask. This is what makes it adjustable. So if you can get these toggle clips, I was able to order them off eBay. Two holes is better than one, but one hole can be adapted and used. If you're planning on making your mask adjustable, the other thing you're gonna need is some toggles. So these are toggles I ordered off eBay. I was actually working on a sock organizer project before, so I had these around the house. These are just two little pieces of plastic. You squeeze them together and it makes a hole, and then when you release the pressure, it squeezes the hole tight so that the elastic um, won't slide. Now I have seen these for sale at Walmart. You usually only get a few for a dollar. If you order on eBay, I was able to just get this huge package. Uh, there's 500 in here and I was able to get this for $30. So they come out really cheap. Additionally, I would recommend some kind of mask that you could wear yourself. 
and a pair of gloves and some cleaning solution, especially for when you're working with our filter material because you don't want to give your germs or any of the germs on the surfaces in your home uh, and put those into the filter material that's gonna go directly to a healthcare worker's face. I'm not as cautious when I'm sewing and working with my fabric because I'm gonna wash all of that before I give that to anybody, but on the filter material, it's not washable, so you wanna be as clean as possible when you're working with that. You also must have an iron to iron your fabric. A sewing machine is essential for this project. In order to do these masks, you definitely need a sewing machine, you definitely need an iron, and a washer and a dryer so you can wash and pre-shrink your fabric. Now, I know not everybody has a sewing machine or is great at using it. If you want to help with these masks, there's a lot of prep work that goes into them, so you don't necessarily have to have the sewing machine. If you have a partner who, where you could do a lot of the prep work, maybe the cutting, the washing, the ironing, and then putting together the nose pieces, and then you could give your prepared product to somebody who has the sewing machine, and that would make running through the sewing a whole lot faster. I don't think you can do this by hand. A lot of people have asked me, but you're stretching elastic onto a fabric surface and it really needs to be strong. I don't know many people who could do this by hand. The next thing you're going to need is your filter material and you can order it at filthy.com. Now stay tuned to the end because I do have a discount code for you just for being one of my viewers. I did a tutorial earlier in the week when I was trying to think about what we could use that would filter viral media and I realized that the 3M high level filters actually do filter viral media. So I did a tutorial about taking apart an HVAC filter and you wind up with this huge sheet of material. And then you could cut this material up if you handle it properly and make it into filters for masks. Now since I did that tutorial, which has over 200,000 views on it, I have gotten so much feedback from so many people. A lot of people said there's fiberglass in there. You don't want your healthcare workers inhaling glass particles. Now I posted the MSDS sheet on those. There is no fiberglass. It's made out of polyprene and other materials. I've talked to a lot of people who know a lot about this and none of them think there are any significant health risks in working with this material. So since I released my first video, 3M has come out and said that they don't recommend using HVAC filters for face masks. Obviously because that's not what they were designed for and you can never know that you're actually gonna get a good seal or anything if you're using something that it hasn't been designed for and hasn't been tested for. One of the things I'm grateful for is that in making that video, I had a couple people reach out to me and say, hey, have you heard of this product called Filthy. This is something that was actually designed for face masks. So I reached out to Filthy. I started talking to some of their developers and asked them for a product sample and this is what they sent me and I can't wait to show you a little bit more about it. Okay. So in this material there are three layers. I can only see two of them. There is the polyprene layer which is this kind of plasticky looking shiny side to it the nanofiber layer, which is the working layer in between that you can't actually see. Then there's a polyester layer, which is this kind of fuzzy side, which sort of acts as a dust catcher. The way they test this material is there's something called a TSI particle counter. This they have in their lab in Oklahoma. And basically what it is is a machine that will shoot particles through this. And it has the ability to count the particles on one side, count the particles on the other side. Now, there's a guy who had a video I was actually really interested in on YouTube where he was he had some sort of aerosol, I don't know what it was, foot spray or something, and he held up a bunch of different materials and was shooting the aerosol through it, and you could see how much was coming out on the other side comparing like t-shirt material versus cotton fabric and things like that. So that was kind of an interesting video to watch. This is that on a much, much more micro level. So the most common size that they use to test through this is 0.26 microns which is why the real N95 is certified at 0.3 microns because that 0.26 is rounded up to 0.3. That's the most commonly tested particle size that they do with these laser particle counters. So every type of filter that exists has a different type of MPPS, which is the most penetrating particle size. So when we're talking about catching COVID particles, COVID is actually 0.12 microns, so smaller than that 0.3 that this is certified for and that the N95 is certified for. But these viral particles aren't just shooting around in the air on themselves, they're usually traveling on droplets. And droplets have a big variety in size. Some droplets are 0.3 microns, some droplets are 5 to 8 microns, some droplets are 10 microns. So protecting us from droplets is really important. Actually wearing this mask gives me some protection because it does help me with the droplets. But if it's in the air and these little micro micron particles are around there, you must have something that's going to filter these out and you must have something with a good seal. Now, Filthy does not have a mask pattern that they recommend. This material is basically for your own DIY. The other thing that's kind of nice about this is that it does not use electrostatic media. 
So the 3M filter that I was using does have some sort of impregnated electrostatic charge in it to catch those viral particles. So that means that moisture is gonna be a huge problem for the HVAC type filters. Now this does not have that problem, so moisture is not gonna be as much of an issue, which is wonderful since it's up against your hot breath all day long. Now eventually all the little pores in this material can get filled up with dust and other particulate matter and then it will become hard to breathe through. As of right now, the company doesn't have a length of time of what's the maximum it could be worn. So because this hasn't been very well tested, my recommendation would be to use this material only one per shift. The other nice thing about it is with the HVAC material, we needed a double layer to achieve the right efficiency. With this material, it should function well as a single layer. Now, if you were watching my other video, we talked about how there's a shiny side and a dull side to that, and the shiny side has to go towards the patient and the dull side towards you. This is the exact opposite. The shiny side goes towards you and the dull side goes towards the patient. So it's very important to label your filter media with what you're using, but I'm very excited about this product. So, and the best news about it is this is actually a whole lot more affordable than the other material. So this comes out to less than 50 cents per mask per day because you only need one. Uh, it's a little bit cheaper to purchase depending on how many you're gonna make. And even better than that, they've given me a My Pocket Pediatrician discount code. So they haven't told me what it's gonna be yet, but for my viewers, you will actually get a discount code, which I'm really excited about because I've had hundreds and hundreds of you email me for my patterns and a lot of people have told me they're having a hard time affording to purchase the materials. So this is awesome that we're going to get a little bit of a discount because they know everybody who's working on these masks is working to help make the world a better place for healthcare providers and so they wanted to give you guys a special discount just because you're watching this video and we'll have that at the end of the video for you. Your per mask cost breakdown is going to vary a lot depending on where you get your materials and how many masks you plan on making, but in general this is about what I got. My cotton is about 35 cents per mask. My elastic is about 75 cents per mask. The floral wire is only about a penny. The six inches of the weather stripping foam was 11 cents. The two toggles were about 12 cents per mask and the seven inches of ribbon were 13 cents per mask. So that turns out to $1.47 per mask and then you also need about 50 cents per day for the filthy material to go inside. So mask step one. Wash and dry your cotton to pre-shrink it. This step can take a really long time depending on how fast your washer and dryer are. So I recommend moving on to making your nose pieces in your elastic loops while you're waiting for this to happen. Nose piece step one, cut your floral wire into six inch strips. So let's get started and get our floral wire going. I wanna cut each piece to about six inches. This is just kind of a rough estimate. Somewhere around there is fine. I've learned that trying to cut more than one at a time doesn't really work well. Nose piece step two, use pliers to bend the ends. Probably don't need the eye protection once I've got them cut, but now that I've got some cut, what I want to do is just take the ends, bend them over slightly, and then use my needle nose pliers to kind of pinch them down. The reason for this is these will move and and slide around a little bit in the mask. And so I don't want them poking the healthcare worker in the face. So when I'm pinching them down, just make sure that they are pointed in towards themselves and not pointing back up and squeezing back up on the other side either. Using the twist tie stuff, it's actually probably a bit easier to work with. Um, and you can just cut a six inch piece or so and it's gonna go right on the nose there. Uh, actually, the edges are still kind of sharp. So I think I would still bend the edges over. Kind of think about it, these masks are gonna get a lot of use and it's sort of like the underwire to a bra that can kind of pop out and poke you at the most comfortable time. So it's better to just make sure you don't have any sharp edges that are gonna be poking your healthcare worker in the face. Nose piece, step three, cut your foam and attach one piece of foam to each wire. We're gonna open it up. And what I like to do, instead of pre-cutting this, I just like to take my piece of metal on here Go ahead and stick it on and then cut it. So this weather stripping is not just for comfort, it's also very important to get a good seal in your mask. One of the things I was thinking about if my masks hadn't passed the, the fit test was uh, if they didn't pass, I was thinking about going back and trying to incorporate this ceiling stripping all the way around. But since they did, I think I was able to get tight enough on the sides with the elastic. But 
if you're making this at home and you find that you're having areas where there's leaking, you may want to go back and incorporate some more stripping somewhere in there. Nose piece, step four. Cut your three quarter inch ribbon into seven inch strips and attach the ribbon to the foam wire combination. It's easier to cut with your nose piece and attach as you go. And then all I'm gonna do is take this, place it right in the middle of my ribbon and cut the ribbon just slightly longer than each of the foam strips. Kids don't leave this stuff lying around. My kids got a hold of some of it and stuck it to everything and it's really a pain to get off of a lot of surfaces. But if you're gonna pre-prepare these, it's fine because then your sticky side is on the ribbon and you don't have to worry about it and the paper is covering the other side. Elastic step one. Cut your elastic into 18 inch and 20 inch strips, one of each per mask. Make sure you make one first to ensure that you're using the correct length of elastic for your materials. As I said before, there's a lot of differences in the elastic that we get and there's so many elastic shortages. I hate to tell you guys measurements, so this is the kind I really like. It's the braided elastic, and I think this one is 3 8 of an inch, and I found it works really well, but it's really hard to find right now. Um, the way I measure this, because I wanna make my straps adjustable, but I'm just gonna take it, put it around my nose, around the back of my head, and just at about 20 inches with this one because I want to have enough room to have it go around my face to stretch and also have room to attach my toggle so that the healthcare worker can adjust the toggle on there. So for me, I found 20 inches around the nose worked and then um, 18 inches around the chin worked. So what I'm going to do is cut that 18 and that 20 inch piece and again, your elastic may be way tighter, it might be a lot looser. So kind of check and see what feels loosely comfortable so that you have a little extra wiggle room to attach your toggle. So I've got 18 for my bottom, 20 for my top. Elastic step two, add a toggle to each strip of elastic. If you're using a single hole toggle, pull two layers of elastic through the hole. If you have a double toggle, run the elastic through both holes of the loop before stitching. So these are the toggles that I have. They're just two pieces of plastic with a spring loaded in them, and when you squeeze them, the hole lines up like this. The kind of thing you find on like a hoodie or sometimes the drawstring of your pants. Um, I was only able to get toggles with one hole, but they do make them with two holes. If you're using a two hole toggle, what you need to do is thread your elastic through both holes up through one, down through the other before you sew your loop. If you're using a one hole toggle, you can actually wait and do this step at the end, but I'll do it here just so you see what I'm doing. I pinch my toggle, and then basically I have to try to take my elastic and push it through the hole. There is get a pair of tweezers or something. If you're in the medical field or you do like, I don't know, wood modeling, hobbying, something like that, you might have something like this. This is a pair of needle drivers I had. I love pulling these through with this. It's a very easy way to do it. If you have tweezers, you could do the same thing, but you probably are gonna need something to grab your elastic and pull it through the hole. Elastic step three. Sew each elastic strip into a loop. Make a slight overlap and zigzag stitch in both directions. Okay, so I have my toggle on my loop and all I'm gonna do is make sure that it's flat so it's all the same direction if it were on my head. And I'm just gonna overlap it maybe half an inch or so and I'm gonna do a zigzag stitch through my uh, elastic. And I usually like to start by going first in this direction and then going in this direction, stretching while I sew, just to make sure I have a good hold on this because these are gonna be fitted very tightly across the face and there's gonna be a lot of pressure and tension on it. Um, so I wanna make sure that this elastic really is gonna hold well together. So I'm going to my zigzag stitch. So just gonna guide it back and forth. And then without cutting my thread, just gonna change directions. And now I have a very strong, stretchy elastic loop that's gonna be a nice fit through my headband. Mask step two. Use your printable template to cut one piece of each color. 
Okay, I laid it out this way so that you guys get an idea of what you're gonna do with your fabric. This is standard 44 inch fabric, 100% cotton. This is folded over in half. So I have two layers here, so I'm gonna half my cutting time. And you can tell I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of the big pieces and eight of the little pieces. Because I cut it down to one yard, I have a little extra room here. So I could probably get eight of the big pieces if I had a longer extension of fabric. But because of the bumps, I kind of, in order to fit it on here, I have to alternate uh, so that the round part goes into the concave part of the other part. Material I got at Walmart for $3 a yard. So since I'm going to have to use the contrasting material as well. So this is a good deal. It's about 40 cents per mask for the cotton that I'm going to use. I laid this the short inner liner on the selvages wherever possible. So for these eight pieces that I get off my selvages, I'm not gonna have to sew the hem. On these pieces, I will. Mask step three. On any piece of the inner liner that does not have a selvage, roll the seams and stitch. So if you have a piece for your inner liner that you used with a selvage on it, you don't have to do this step. But for the pieces that have a rough edge, what you want to do is just do a very quick double rolled hem. So I just fold it over once, fold it over twice. You can press it with your iron if you like. You don't have to because this is just such a quick, easy, straight stitch. Just going to use a straight stitch. So now I have a finished edge for my inner liner. Mask step four. Stitch the liner to the round curve on the front and the back of the mask. I can grab one of my front pieces and all I'm gonna do is put them, I'm gonna put them right sides together. So when we talk about fabric, there's the right side, which is the side that looks pretty and the wrong side, which is the side that's kind of the back side. So we have right sides together here. And all I'm gonna do is stitch on the curved part of my top of my seam here. Do not stitch the flaps here, only the curved line. So eventually this mask is gonna sit like this on the front of my face. I'm gonna repeat this step for the inside of my mask. And this one is a plain material, so it's hard to know what's right and what's wrong, but I'm just gonna pick two, two sides and put them together. I have the selvage on this piece so I don't have to do my rolled hem. Do is sew that curve again just like I did for the first one. So now I have my inner liner and I'm just going to take this piece, put it away for a little bit. Mask step five. Sew your ribbon of your nose piece to the seam on the front color of your mask. So what I'm going to do now is take one of my nose pieces that's already been prepared. So this is the foam, the wire, and the ribbon, and I'm going to sew it to my front of my mask. So I want the right sides together on this. I'm going to be sewing this to the seam. I think it's better to sew it to the bigger side. So I'm going to put the big side of my mask here. I'm going to take my ribbon, or find the middle of it, put it kind of right at the peak of this curve here. bend it down a little bit. Then I'm just gonna sew a straight stitch along the ribbon, attaching it to the seam of my mask. I wanna do my best not to sew through this foam because the stickiness on the foam will gum up your needle and break your thread and make everything a mess. And I'm trying to get my stitch pretty much right on top of the seam that I just sewed. So now my nose piece is halfway attached. It's free, the sides are not sewn. I can go ahead and remove the paper. Sometimes what I do is I'll take my foam off and kind of reattach it into the seam now that I have it already sewn down nicely on that side. And doing that just gives me a little more room to work with on my ribbon so I don't catch the foam on the other side when I'm sewing this side eventually. Mask step six. Remove the paper from your nose piece foam. Insert your 20 inch loop under the ribbon stitch only the lower seam, making sure not to catch the elastic. So now I'm just gonna double check, make sure I've got my bottom loop and my top loop. The top loop should be longer. So I'm gonna take my top loop now and I'm gonna slide it under the band with the rest of my nose piece here. So now it's kind of tucked in here. 
And what I want to do is just sew my ribbon right over the top of it. Again, just using a straight stitch, I don't want to catch the elastic in here if I can help it. Somebody asked me, wouldn't it be easier to leave your stitch part out of the mask? It'd be easier, but there's a lot of tension on this. And so what I would like is for the elastic to be stitched into the mask directly. And that way, as our healthcare workers are stretching these, taking them on and off, doing a lot of uh, washing and everything, the part that's the weakest is gonna have some reinforcement by being sewn into my ribbon. And again, I just keep kind of tucking and looking as I go. So now, and that's nice, I can pull it through on both sides. This ribbon is like a conduit with the nose piece and the elastic running through it. Mask step seven. Stretch your elastic through the ribbon conduit. Stitch the ribbon ends and zigzag the ribbon to the rest of the curve on the mask. So what I'm gonna do is pick one side. I'll just take this side because it's right here. And I'm gonna go right over where my elastic is. Now I like to feel in here and make sure I'm not gonna be sewing onto my wire because I've broken so many needles by stitching onto my wire by accident. So I found the edge of my wire, I'm, I'm making sure I'm below that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do a quick little zigzag stitch here. Both to kind of anchor off my nose piece inside and also to, to permanently attach the elastic here. And now what I wanna do with my elastic is stretch it and I'm gonna stretch as I sew it into the, just next to the seam of the mask here. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, except this time I'm gonna give my elastic a little bit more pull because I wanna have a little bit of stretch through the nose piece. I feel my wire, it's right there, so I know I need to come a little bit past that. I'm just gonna stretch my elastic a bit. And now I'm going to ready to anchor in place. Now my nose piece and my elastic are secured into the front piece of my mask. Mask step eight. Flip the lining so the wrong sides are together on both pieces of material. Place the right sides together of your front and back and stitch the bottom seam. You can just flip over your liner portion and do a quick stitch along this side just so that you have it kind of down. You're also gonna be sewing a side seam here, so this step isn't entirely necessary, but it will make it a little bit more form-fitting. So again, starting on the elastic, so I'm gonna do zigzag. But I don't wanna sew over my wire, so as I'm passing over the nose piece, I'm just gonna go a little bit below it. And I'm just sort of feeling with my fingers as I go to make sure I don't hit the metal. So now the front portion of our mask is done. Take one of my back pieces and I'm gonna take these two pieces, put the right sides together. So right now my mask is kind of inside out. I'm gonna do a straight stitch right along the bottom edge. I'm not doing the sides of the mask, only the bottom edge. So now the front and back of my mask are sewn together. Mask step nine, zigzag stitch your bottom 18 inch loop to the seam on the wrong sides of the bottom of the mask. And I'm ready for my second elastic loop. Just turn it so I'm looking at the wrong sides where the seam is. I'm gonna take my elastic here to the bottom seam of my mask. Okay, I'm putting the sewn portion into the mask so we're never gonna see that and it's gonna get that reinforcement and I'm just gonna stitch it right along the seam. So I start anchoring it with just a little bit of a zigzag stitch and then I'm gonna start stretching as I sew so that this gets a really good tight stretch on the bottom of my mask. So now I have my two pieces of elastic. Mask step 10. Flip your elastic to the right sides and stitch the left and right sides of the front and back pieces together ensuring the elastic loops remain on the right sides. And what I wanna do is flip both of my pieces of elastic towards the right sides of the fabric. This is really important because otherwise you're gonna trap your elastic away from your user and they won't be able to get it. So now that those pieces are in on the pretty side of my mask, I'm gonna take my mask and fold it up and prepare to do my side seams. So I have the folded edges down, pretty sides together, the elastic is on the inside, 
And I'm just gonna sew along the edge of the left and right sides of my mask. And I wanna tuck the elastic in as far as it will go. But I do wanna make sure I am catching these little flaps of the liner in that seam so that they don't get loose inside my mask. And I like to do a little extra reinforcement there because there's gonna be a lot of tension on this seam. Make sure again, I'm tucked inside and I will repeat. Same thing for my opposite side of my face. And I made sure my bottom loop is as tucked in as possible so I'm not wasting any space there. And I'm just gonna come right down here and catch the edge. So now my mask is basically a little inside out purse. Mask step 11. Add elastic to both side seams, stretching tightly while sewing. So now my mask is basically a little inside out purse. What I need to do here is very important. I'm gonna take some of my elastic and I like to leave it attached. I don't wanna cut this first. And what I wanna do is sew this to the entire side seam of my mask. So I'm gonna start at the top. Again, with the zigzag stitch, I wanna make sure I'm not catching my elastic there because I want that to be free to go around the head. And now that I have it anchored, I'm gonna just pull this as hard as I can. I want it stretched as tightly as possible. And I'm following exactly on the seam as I go. Now the reason I don't pre-cut this is because if I did, then I wouldn't be able to stretch that end at the bottom. And I really, it's very important to stretch as you sew here. Mask step 12. Flip the mask right side out and zigzag one and a half inches on each side of the top of the mask, leaving the pocket open where the nose piece is. I'm gonna turn it right side out. And the reason for doing it this way is that I don't wanna catch my elastic when I'm sewing. So now I have my pocket mask, it's round, it's stretchy. It's gonna fit nicely to the face. But the one thing I wanna do is sew just from here to the edge of my nose piece on both sides, sewing the back piece to the front piece so that this isn't flapping all over the place. And there's still a nice big hole. I want this flopped up here or anything like that. So that just kinda of helps the mask fit a little better and hold in place. So what I'm gonna do is just start at this end. And again, we're sewing through our elastic. all these zigzag stitches starting to look like a horror movie but the function is a lot more important than the form here so again I'm gonna stretch while I sew and go right to the edge of my nose piece just take a look go through snip any little threads that you see dangling because we did a lot of sewing here these threads can tickle if you're wearing the mask and the last thing you want your healthcare worker doing is reaching up and touching their face while they're working. So this is our mask. If you're using the single toggle, when you pull this, you can pull it right off. The double toggle is nice because you won't pull it off because it's woven through there, but the single one loosening your mask, you can definitely pull it straight off. What I've been doing is tying something on or sewing something on here that won't come off so that you don't pull it off by accident. So I bought these stretchy headbands at the dollar store and they were way too stretchy. They did not work. I didn't pass a fit test when I used this as my elastic, but it is an easy way to make sure my toggle doesn't come off. So I'm gonna tie these on the ends if I'm using the single toggles, which are cheaper and easier to find. So you might be using single ones. I've been sewing little pieces of elastic on the end too, but that just isn't another time consuming step. So. is pretty quick and easy okay so now I'm gonna try my mask on and check the fit this is important before you start mask producing and mask cutting because like I said we're all using different material it's hard to get fabric it's hard to get to the store it's hard to get elastic so you might follow my pattern exactly and it could come out completely different so try it on when you try it on without a filter in it you're still gonna be able to smell and breathe pretty easily because you're breathing just through straight cotton but now I can take my toggle, squeeze it, adjust it, get it as tight as I want under my face. Same thing for the top, I have a big head. 
you have a smaller head, you might have to pull that a little tighter. But there's no room here, no room here. I'm blowing up, nothing's happening. I feel like my fit is good, my seal is good, the foam is in there, it's nice and comfortable, the nose bar is there, and I think I have a pretty good mask. Make sure you make a single one, check it out first, and then start mask producing. Filter, step one. Clean work surfaces, wash your hands, and wear a mask and gloves if possible. The first thing I wanna do is clean all my surfaces really well. As I said in the video I did about coronavirus, we should all just assume we have coronavirus. So assuming I have coronavirus, I don't wanna breathe that into my filter material. These filters I still believe should be one-time use. I don't wear a mask when I'm sewing because that's gonna be washed and it can be sanitized before I give it to my healthcare worker. If you don't have gloves at home, a thorough washing is probably adequate. And if you don't have a mask, you could probably just tie a piece of fabric around your face to kind of contain your own droplets to yourself. Filter step two, print and cut the filter pattern template. In your template that I have printable for you, there's a fabric template and there's a filter template. So these are printable templates that you can get. And the fabric is for your mask material and this is for your filter material. I made the filter material just a tiny bit smaller, but the same shape than the mask material. Now we really want to have a good fit with our mask, but when you sew your mask, then so you have a little bit uh, that's gonna be taken away with the seam allowance. You wanna make sure that every portion of your mask is filled up as much as possible with the filter. So that's why I designed this shape so that it's just a tiny bit enough to take off what you're missing with your seam allowances and you can still completely fill your mask. Filter step three, cut the filthy material to the pattern. Comparatively, when I started making this mask design for my friend, I didn't have this material yet. And so I was trying to cut these accordion shaped filters and it's kind of a pain um, because the material kind of bumps up and you have to constantly flatten and keep your hand on it. I don't have to remove wire mesh, get poked, get the cardboard, deal with the glue. This was designed for this, it's sold by the roll for this or you can get it in sheets. Uh, it's much more convenient, it's much easier to work with. This is what it was purposed for, so I feel a lot more excited about using this and putting it out there as an idea that it could be used for this purpose. These sheets, you need two per mask if you're using the filtrat to get a correct level of filtration. With these, it's only one. So this takes the cost to closely 50 cents per mask per day to use these, whereas this is a little bit closer to a dollar. Filter, step four. Label the filter Filthy and HCW on the shiny side of each filter. So when we're using this material, if you guys have watched my other video, I talked about how you put the shiny side out towards the patient and the soft side towards the healthcare worker. These are the opposite. When you look at these, there's definitely a shiny side and there's a soft side. You actually want the fuzzy side out towards the patient and the shinier side towards you. So when you're labeling these, looking again to make sure I've got the sheen versus the dull. Yes, so this time the shiny side is towards the healthcare worker. So I'm gonna write H, C, W, and I'm gonna write filthy on here. Because again, when people are making masks and they don't know what they are, you wanna make sure that they know what they're getting. It's not paper towels. My kids actually looked at this and thought it was a paper towel. Filter step five, place cut and labeled filters into a Ziploc bag to deliver with the masks to your healthcare worker. Mask step 13, insert a single filter into the mask like a duvet, ensuring that there is no area uncovered by filter material. So what I'm gonna do is put this in here. Now in my masks, I made the green side towards the healthcare worker, the light flowery side towards the outside. And what I wanna do is still put this in here and kind of stuff it like I'm stuffing a duvet. So I take a corner and find the bottom corner. And then from the outside, I pinch it to hold it in place. Now the same thing on the opposite bottom corner. Go in here, kind of pinch it into place. And then 
because there's some curving in this mask. I want to make sure I get this corner into here and this corner all the way down into here. I wanna make sure there's no place where there's fabric and there's not filter material because air is gonna find the path of least resistance. And so I wanna make sure there's no way for air to find a way around my filter material and get through the fabric. So now that I have this, it's basically ready to wear. Mask step 14. Try on the mask and pinch the nose piece for comfort. Adjust the toggles as needed. Blow upwards, downwards, turn your face to the side, look for leaks, and fit test if possible. check out our square mask with the filtrette, our square mask with the filthy, the round mask with the filtrette, the round mask with the filthies, and I'm also going to try out these different elastics that I've been experimenting with and find out if I, if I can get a good fit test with those as well. You can now begin mass production based on your material measurements. Feel free to create goodie bags for your healthcare workers with washed masks, bags of filters, and the printable healthcare worker instruction sheet with a link to the healthcare worker video. So that's it, we're done. I hope you didn't think this was too complicated. I do think it's really feasible if you just go through and follow the steps, and I do have a printable guide so that if you're working on this, you can have the steps broken down and then the timestamps of where they are in the video. So that will be uploaded on my website, mypocketpediatrician.com. Uh, it's in the post section on YouTube, and you can also email me at mypocketpediatrician at gmail.com, and I can send it to you as well, along with the printable template for both the filter and the fabric. Let's talk about the fit test, because that was the most important part of this entire video. So this mask passed the fit test, but I also wanted to check all of my other designs and with the different filter material. Now when I did these fit tests, this was kind of a modified fit test. I was able to get in the tent and do the thing. Now a normal fit test is about seven minutes. I did not take a full seven minutes with each product because a very kind pediatrician out of the kindness of his heart let me come in and borrow a nurse and use their fit testing equipment. They were also busy treating patients so she had to leave a few times throughout. So I was trying not to impede their patient flow and take up too much of their time. But I was able to put the mask on, move in all directions, get 10 puffs of the spray, read a paragraph off the wall, bend over and touch my toes with each one, and that's what I'm using as my fit test. So it wasn't a full seven minutes, but uh, if you are gonna wear this when you're actually exposed, I would definitely recommend doing a full fit test if possible. So this is my mask, my original mask, the square design with the two filtrets in there. This passed the fit test, no problem. This is my round mask. Uh, the newer version with the filthy material inside and this also passed the fit test no problem this was with one layer of filthy inside I know a lot of people have been making my masks and you might be interested in using this mask with the filthy material so I decided to try that as well now this one did not pass and because I was in a hurry when I got home, I looked into the pocket and I realized that my filthy material, the one layer of material, did not, it was kind of bunched up inside. So of course it couldn't pass because there was several corners where it was just fabric and that's why I was able to taste that yucky stuff. I wish I had time to go back and refit test it with the material actually appropriately stretched out, but that also goes to my point that when you put your filter in your mask, it is vitally important to make sure every single piece of fabric is covered with the material. Because the filthy passed in the round mask, I'm assuming it would have passed in the square mask had I put it in correctly. Also, if you try a fit test with one of these and it doesn't pass, you may want to double up on your layers and see if it could pass with two layers of the material. But with the one layer of material, when it was appropriately placed into the round mask, I had no trouble and it passed very easily. And then like I mentioned in the beginning when I was discussing supplies, when I fit tested this version of it, I thought this wasn't going to pass because this one is so painful on my face. But it actually did pass. I think it's painfully tight, but that does give you a good seal. When I used this stringy elastic, this elastic is just too weak. There's no way for it to create a good suction to your face. So this one completely failed. Uh, it was a disaster. I don't recommend making a mask out of this stuff. Now, 
I had to pick one of these out of all this combinations of mask styles and filter styles. If I didn't have the appropriate PPE when I go back to work, uh, I'm gonna pick this one. I like the round feel of it, it's comfortable. I like the filthy material because I know it was designed for this and the company recommends using it for masks. That's what the whole purpose of it is. Now they don't put any guarantee on your design but I easily passed a fit test in this and I would wear this and I also like that all I have to do is pull out my single filter, discard it. Now when I pull it out, I need to be careful. This is gonna be full of viral particles. So I do know I'm gonna get a million questions about can this be reused? I don't know. Um, when I take it out, I need to consider this contaminated. I need, I would probably just throw it away. Now, there are people who are baking them in the oven. There are people who are putting them in the autoclave. I know Filthy has done some testing using their, their particle machine, and they were able to heat it in the autoclave, and I believe it still functioned at the same level after going through an autoclave. I don't know how many times it can go through an autoclave. Now, I accidentally ran one of these through my washing machine and dryer, and so I mailed it to them, and they pulled it out. And they were able to tell me that after it went through my washer and dryer and I mailed it to them, the efficacy of it went down about 60%. So I definitely don't wash and dry these. I don't know about using them in an autoclave. I would be a little uncomfortable. And since these are only about 50 cents a day for the insert, I would feel a lot more comfortable with a brand new filter every day. That way I know I'm not cross-contaminating myself while I'm trying to decontaminate this. Um, it's just gone in the garbage and I can have another perfectly cut filter that I'm gonna put in the next time I'm gonna wear it after I've washed my mask. Again, remember you should wear a face shield and goggles and definitely a face shield over any fabric mask that you're gonna be wearing. I do have the tutorial on how to make an easy face shield out of vinyl or out of shower curtains. There's also a lot that can be 3D printed. And I'd love to hear from you guys, see what you think, let me know. So every time I've made a video, and I think this is the seventh or eighth one I've made in the last couple weeks, I'm convinced that I'm done and that I'm not gonna change anything with my design. And then all of a sudden I get better ideas. So I tell my kids, oh, mommy's gonna be done. We're just gonna go for some walks and have some fun. And then two minutes later, I've got a better idea and I'm making a new tutorial. So please subscribe just in case there are any updates. Check the comments because a lot of people have some good ideas. Not all of them are good, but check and see what other people are saying about this or leave your own comment. And make sure you subscribe so if I do get any updates about this, I will let you know. And your promo code by watching this video through Filthy is going to be... So this code is good for 10% off your purchase. There's a little discount drop down. You click that button and then type in MPP mask. It's not case sensitive, but MPP for My Pocket Pediatrician and then mask, M-A-S-K, all one word. So just put that in the promo code box when you check out and you'll get your discount. Thank you so much for working so hard to try to protect the people that you love and our healthcare workers who are out there on the front lines. I really hope this is a good alternative. My greatest wish would be that we all have an excess of commercially made protective equipment. But in the case that we don't, I'm hoping that this is an okay alternative. Again, this is kind of still a last resort. You don't wanna do this if you have something that's been proven to work. If you have no other alternative, I'm hoping this is a good solution. Remember to fit test. Oh, and one more thing. A lot of people keep asking me to make a version of this for children. I don't think this will work for children. As a mom of four, I can tell you kids don't like having stuff on their faces. Stand it, they're ripping them off. My answer for my kids is just to keep them home. I don't trust them in stores. I don't trust them anywhere. We'll go for walks in the woods and things like that, but we are completely physically distancing from all other people because my kids are all between the ages of three and seven, and I just know there's no way that we could do that. The other issue is... Uh, especially for small children, again, like the people who have asthma or COPD, this is gonna have them rebreathing their carbon dioxide. And that's something that can be very dangerous for babies. So no masks at all for babies. Uh, for young children, I don't think they would tolerate having this on their face. And if you're gonna make a mask, I would do a simple one. But a mask with a tight seal for a child is probably not gonna be a good idea. So please subscribe, make sure you get any updates if they come up, check out other people's ideas and thoughts on this. And this is Dr. Lily with My Pocket Pediatrician. Thanks for stopping by. And please don't forget to check out that YouTube Live. I am gonna have Andy and some of the other guys on the development team on there, and you'll be able to ask them any kind of questions that you have about the product, the development, the YouTube, and any other burning questions that you may have. I will post the link and the date and time for that YouTube Live in my description.